All right, guys, welcome to Math 0314, 1.6 Absolute Value Equations. All right, so uh, let's talk about absolute value for a second. And most people think of absolute value, and they have some exposure to this. If you took me for the previous course, we definitely had spoken of absolute value. And most people see absolute value, and they say, well, what is absolute value? You make the number positive. So if you ask someone, who, what is the absolute value of 4? they will say 4. If they say, what's the absolute value of negative 4, they will say 4, and the answer will be because we made it positive. And so the interesting question is, what is the absolute value of x when it is equal to 4? Well, based on the two previous statements, if it's 4, right, it means that x has to be 4 or x has to be negative 4. So we would say x equals 4 or negative 4, right? Now, this this idea of when we say make it positive, um, that's not actually correct. The technical definition of absolute value is the distance from 0. And what this means is how far are you from 0. So if we said the absolute value of 4, the distance that 4 is from 0 is 4. The absolute value of negative 4 is also 4 because it's 4 away from 0. So that's really what's going on here. Um, and this next little bit is, is might be a little little extra, but uh, I don't think students get exposed to this, so I just want to show exactly what's going on here. What actually occurs is something called a piecewise function. What absolute value actually means is that when we take the absolute value of x, there's two situations that emerge. If x is greater than or equal to 0, then the absolute value of x is going to just equal x. But if x is less than 0, then the absolute value of x equals negative x. And this is kind of a weird sort of way to look at it, but if you think about it, it makes sense. So what I'm saying here on the bottom part is if x equals negative uh, 4, then how do you make it positive? Well, in math, we don't just boom, make it positive. We have to put a negative sign, which means actually the opposite, which then would make it positive. So that's a little bit extra, a little technical reason what it is, and one last thing here that I want to illustrate is I'm getting ahead of the curve here, or line, um, but y equals x looks like this, it's this line right here, uh, y equals negative x looks like this, okay, they actually have the same slope, I just can't draw, you know what, let me try to do that again, I can be better, I think, okay, that looks better, y equals negative x looks like this. What happens is we said when it's greater than or equal to zero, it's the green one. So this piece would go away, right? Values that are greater are on the right side. And values that are less, it's going to be the purple. So anything that's positive is going to go away. So this right here would go away. And that's why those of you who aren't too far removed from high school see that the absolute value function looks like a V, okay? So that's a little extra. It's beyond the scope of this class, but I just wanted to expose you to because I don't feel people are ever formally taught what absolute value actually means. Moving on. So what you guys are going to be asked to do is to solve questions like this. Um, and this is hopefully should be straightforward. This is exactly like the one that I did here, right? This right here. So... If the absolute value of x equals 5, then all you have to say is that x could be 5 or negative 5, right? And if you don't believe me, plug it in here and plug it in here and see that it's true. Easy enough. Number two, what have we done to spice it up? Well, we've added some stuff around the absolute value function. And so that's what you're going to see predominantly. And the name of the game is always get the function by itself. So the absolute value of w 
equals 14. And then we do exactly what we just did. So we say w is equal to 14 or negative 14. Cool? Moving on. What is the absolute value of, what is PE when the absolute value of P is equal to zero? Well, this is actually where, what I said, the technical definition of absolute value really does matter because if we say make it positive, zero is neither positive nor negative, so that is strange. Um, but if we say the distance from zero, well, what is the distance zero is from zero? It's zero. So this is a special case that only has one answer, and that's that P is zero. What about if I say the absolute value of x equals negative 6? So this one you should pause and think about, and what can have a distance of negative 6? Well, distance isn't negative, so this isn't, you can't do it. So there's no solution. Sometimes no solution is, I think your homework is going to put empty brackets, but we could also do, uh, or braces rather, we can also do a 0 with a line through, which is the empty set. All of these mean the same thing. All right, so I've done a couple. Now you should be able to do five, six, seven, eight, and we'll stop at eight, okay? So please run through right now. Try five, six, seven, and eight on your own. Um, these are pretty short, so we'll just do them all together. So I'm going to assume that you've paused the video, given it a shot. Let's do it together. So 5, hopefully you said y is 7 or negative 7, right? It can be positive or negative. And 6, we have to isolate first. And then v will be positive or negative 4. And we could write it this way or this way. They're both correct. Uh, this one, same thing. So W here is just, this is the one case that's unique. You only have one, it's W is zero. The only distance from zero is zero. And this one you can't do, so no solution. Wow, that's an interesting way to spell solution. Solution. Mine works faster than the hand. Um, or we could do the braces. Or we could do zero with a line through. All those are acceptable. Number nine, this is the one that is, this is where we start getting really into the meat and potatoes. All right, so on this one, what we did, well, let me go back to number five. So number five, we said we could say y is seven or y equals negative seven, right? Now, I'm going to do one more thing here. Technically, really, if we go back to the the actual definition, what I really should be saying, ooh, right here, based off this definition, I really should be saying that on something like this, it's not really this. The real first step is to say negative y equals 7. Then you would divide through by negative 1, and you'd get negative 7. That's technically what's going on. Um, but it's easy enough to flip the neg negative sign to the other side, so that's what, what most people do. So in this, we're going to do actually the same thing. You take the thing inside the absolute value. This is called the argument. You set it equal to the number, or you take the argument. Now, technically, this is negative. You set it equal to the number. Okay, the negation of it is an equal number. Uh, most students will start with this version of it, and that's perfectly fine. Um, it's, not, it's not an issue. Uh, and then we just solve. So solve the equation. Three. And I'm going to assume at this point that solving these equations is uh, second nature. It should start to be getting to become second nature. Most of you have had some exposure to solving basic equations. And I'm going to start quickly running through the, that portion because I don't feel like we have to sit and spend six hours going through every single little, little problem. If you are still having issues, please email me. You can make a comment if you want. Um, 
if if me zipping through the equations is a problem, I can slow it down, but I feel like we're getting to a point that we don't need to. Okay, um, now, if you're looking at this and you have any sort of hesitancy, and I encourage you to do this even for yourself when you're solving a problem, I do this when I'm not certain of something, take the, the, the values and substitute it in. Obviously, if it's a test and I have time, I'm going to do this regardless. So if I plug in 4 here, 2 times 4 is 8, 8 minus 3 is 5, the absolute value of 5 is 5, and then if I plug in negative 1, negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5, the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. So we're good. So more of the same. Uh, let's actually, I was going to let you do this one, but then I didn't realize what the answer was going to be. So if you subtract 6 here, you get 2c minus 5, absolute value equals negative 4. And you may want to think about separating them, but that would be incorrect. The answer here is that there is no solution. Empty set or these empty braces. And the question should be why? And that is that the absolute value can't equal to a negative number. Okay? So one thing here that uh, I always tell students is that you can't think like a computer. Okay? And I want you just to, like, just stop thinking and just solving every single problem once you get the pattern down. No, you have to think about what your final answer is and how it works out. And in this case, the way it works out is that uh, you get a negative value and you can't take the absolute value of a negative number. Okay, moving on. All right, so this is one that you can definitely do on your own. Pause the video, give it a shot. Actually, let's see here. You could what? Well, you could do this one on your own, and we'll leave. So let's do eleven and twelve. You can do eleven and twelve on your own. So pause the video, try it on your own, and then we'll see what happens. Okay. So I'm assuming that you've done that. So we're going to take this and we're going to break it down into two cases. Four x plus one is nine and 4x plus 1 equals negative 9. And then we solve. So subtract 1, subtract 1, divide through by 4, x is 2. Here we're going to subtract 1, subtract 1. I always hate when it gets to be a fraction, so that's okay. Negative 5 over 2. So x equals 2, x equals negative 5 over 2. And hopefully that makes sense. Number 12, we're just going to subtract 3. And I hope that this situation actually starts to make you happy. Because we're getting the absolute value equal to a negative number, which means there is no solution. Right, you can't take the absolute value of a negative number. So, hopefully that makes sense. Let's move on to 13. So 13, it's pretty much the same thing. Again, you're just going to try, you want to get the absolute value by itself. The only thing that we've thrown in to make things more complicated is that we've multiplied through by a value. So if you're feeling adventuresome, you can pause the video and try it on your own, um, or you can just wait for me to do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add 7 to both sides. All right, the goal is to get the absolute value by itself. So I'm going to put stuff together first so I can put the numbers together. They're, al they're alike. Um, negative 12, negative 2, and then we can divide through negative 2, equals 6, and then we just solve, so subtract 3. Now, this is a situation that is probably not super common. Uh, when you have, let me rewrite it, 2 over p equals 3, what you can do is multiply both sides by p, and you get 2 equals 3p, and then you would divide through by 3, and 2 thirds is p. Okay? But if you look at what I actually did here, what did I actually do with 3 and p? I just switched position. So if you ever see something like that, you have the variable in the denominator, you can literally just take these and you can switch them. This is the proof for why it's always true. But this is a nice little trick to get into because doing this, this intermediate step, it's, it can get time consuming. And so um, what you really want, especially if you're going to 
eventually go on and do some some higher math. Uh, you want to get comfortable with easy steps like this and to quickly get through them because it's the more steps you do, the more liable you are to make a silly mistake. And um, the other thing is you don't want to get bogged down in easy math when eventually, and I'm using easy math in air quotes here, um, when eventually the math becomes a lot more complicated. So if you can quickly zip through the the basic algebra, um, that will make your life a lot easier. Um, so hopefully that that makes you like, huh, didn't realize that. So I just went, I said basic math, and then, of course, <laughs> I made a silly mistake. Okay, so P is two-thirds. Okay. What did I do wrong here? Okay. So I did consider the positive case right here, but now I also have to do what? I have to consider the negative case. So let's see if I can fit this in. So it was 2 over P plus 3 equals now negative 6. Right? Because here we got 2 two over p plus 3. I really should have written here the absolute value of 2 over p plus 3 equals 6. I was so eager to solve the problem, I forgot to write the absolute value. So this was for the positive case, but I also have to consider now the negative case. So notice negative 6. So let's do that. Um, subtract 3. 2 over p equals negative 9. And then here, again, I'm going to use the little switch technique that I've done. So 2 over negative 9 equals p. There you have it. So hopefully that makes sense. On to the next one. So this is more of the same. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead, pause the video, and try it on your own. going to assume that you've... Oh, sorry. I'm going to assume that you've done that. And let's go through this together. So... Again, you're just getting the value by itself. This is pretty much like the last one. They're just throwing in some fractions to try to scare you. That is not dividing. That's subtracting, so it's 12. Then we're going to divide through by 3. And then we're going to consider here, I'm going to actually write them out. 3 over 2a plus 1 equals 4. And 3 over 2a plus 1 equals negative 4. And then we just go through and we solve these. So subtract 1. And here, same thing. Subtract 1. Now, if I want to get rid of 3 over 2, I'm going to go ahead and do it in one swoop. I'm going to multiply by 2 thirds because that <clears throat> will cancel out these two, and then that will cancel out these two. On here, it's nice because the 3 cancels out, and so A is 2. On this side, I'm going to do the same thing. Multiply by 2 thirds. Nothing cancels out here in a nice way, so it's just negative 10 over 3. Those are my answers. Awesome. Next one. All right, so in the next one, they gave, they've they given us fractions. Um, I actually made it really easy. I'm sorry, fractions, decimals. Um, they actually made it really easy, though. Uh, we can easily subtract negative 6.9 from both sides and get, sorry, um, easily get 0 equals the absolute value of 4.1 minus P, and then, so this is nice because it's equal to zero, so I can just say zero equals 4.1 minus P, or negative 4.1 equals negative P, and if you're not seeing that, all I did is subtract 4.1 from both sides. And so since they're both negative, if I divide through by a negative, is 4.1. Cool. Uh, so 
So more of the same here. So if you haven't done so already, pause the video, give it a shot. You can assume that you've done so. You can almost just like see what the answer is going to become. So this becomes zero is equal to the absolute value of 1.2 plus x. I love these problems because you, if it's equal to zero, it's just 1.2 plus x equals zero, so negative 1.2 plus x, because 1.2 minus 1.2 is zero, or 1.2 plus negative 1.2 is zero. Hopefully that makes sense. On to the next one. Okay, so this is a, one of these situations that when you first see it, you're like, oh my goodness, this looks so difficult because there's two absolute values. Um, but actually, it's pretty simple. So, um, what you want to realize is that we, when we do something like this, we are considering, there's actually four cases to consider, right? They're, they're both positive. The first one is negative, and the second one is positive. The second, the the second expression, I should say, is negative. So we're running out of space there. I'm just going to squeeze the last one down here. Or they're both negative. Oops. And what you what you should realize when you're writing each of these out is that in reality these two are the same, right? And you could ask yourself, well, why is that true, Mr. Anderson? And I'll tell you why. Because if I divide through by negative one, I get the top one, right? Or if I multiply through by negative one, I would get the bottom one, right? So they're the same. And the same argument holds for these two, right? If I multiply through by negative one on one side, I'll get the other. So if that's the case, you only really have to consider two options. And which two options you decide is up to you. Uh, I'm just going to make them both positive. And then I'm going to cons consider the option when I'll just do the first one's negative. It doesn't really matter. Those are the first two I wrote, so those will be the first two that I'll use. Okay? And then from here, you just solve it like like normal, like a regular equation. So subtract 2y here, 2w, negative 3 equals 3w plus 1. Then I will subtract 1, put my numbers together, divide through by 3. Sorry, my penmanship is less than exquisite. There's the answer to the first one. On this one, I'm going to distribute out the negative. There's really no other option. And you'll see that I still subscribe to the notion of always trying to keep things positive as long as possible. So that's why I added 2w. If you like to keep your variable on one side, you can, you can do that. We all come from different walks of math. Or life. What's the difference? And I'll divide through by 7. And there we have it. So, if you see two, all, two absolute values, all you have to end up doing is make them both, either both positive, both negative, or make, and then choose one of, one of the sides to be negative. Okay? Um, I would go with, make them both positive, and then make, choose whichever one's easier to make negative as your second option. Okay, so pause the video if you haven't done so already, give this a go. And I'm gonna assume that you've done so. And so hopefully you've written this as three minus two x equals three x minus one. We make them both positive, and then we make one negative. So negative three minus two x equals three x minus one. And then I'm going to add 2x, so 3 equals 5x minus 1, add 1, 4 
4 equals 5x divide through by 5. Fourth is x. On the other side, uh, we're going to distribute the negative. So negative 3 plus 2x equals 3x minus 1. <clears throat> I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. Negative 3 equals x minus 1. Add 1 to both sides. Negative 2x is x. I'm sorry, negative 2 is x. Okay. All right, so I think the last two are more or less the same thing. So if you haven't already, uh, pause the video, try 19, but also try number 20, because I think they're pretty much the same sort of idea. And I'm going to assume that you did so. You may see something kind of interesting here. So follow the same idea, make them both positive, and make them, make them both, make one of them negative. And let's solve. So the interesting thing here is that on this one we solve, we subtract x from both sides, we get negative 4 equals 8, which is not true. Okay, so there's nothing to do there. On this side we're going to get negative x plus 4 equals x plus 8. And so when we solve this, uh, I'm going to add x to both sides. Subtract 8. Divide through by 2. So this one, you only end up getting one solution, and that's okay. It's okay to end up getting one solution. Um, so don't don't freak out if that ends up happening. Um, and uh, hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's jump on to the next one. And we're going to see the same thing that happens here. So we're going to get 4x plus 3 equals to 4x minus 5. And then we're also going to get negative 4x plus 3 equals 4x minus 5. I'm going to solve these. So you're going to see the same thing that happens over this one, right? Subtract 4x. And you're going to get 3 equals negative 5, which is not true. And on this one, we're going to get negative 4x minus 3 equals 4x minus 5. If I add 4x to both sides, negative 3 equals 8x minus 5. Add 5. 2 equals 8x. So x is 1 fourth. Watch yourself if you put 4. And again, we only have one solution. So sometimes when you solve these, of course, you can you can get one solution. So I hope that this makes sense. Um, basically, you're just making sides positive and then negative and then solving equations. Like I said, the meat and potatoes of this really you know, of this course thus far of chapter one is really to understand 1.1. If you really understand 1.1, all we're doing is adding a little little extra spice to it. So hopefully that makes sense, and I'll see you next time.